Howdy. This is my tree planting documentary movie. The oversimplified fact that I want you to keep in mind throughout this movie is that trees take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and they store the carbon and they release oxygen. Now, the problem here is that the environmentalists and the climate scientists are messing up the message. You see, when the problem is too much carbon dioxide in the air, the obvious solution is that we need to plant more trees. However, despite the fact that humanity needs to plant billions of trees right now, it seems like nothing is getting done. So, in this movie we will discuss trees and global warming and I will respond to some of the objections to tree planting that you might hear. To begin, we have to go back in history. The last glacial maximum was about 20,000 years ago, and then the younger driest cold period was about 15,000 years ago, and ever since then the earth more or less has been on a steady warming trend. Over those thousands of years, the earth started getting warmer and the ice started to melt and the sea levels began to rise. The beaches of 15,000 years ago are now more than 100 meters below sea level. One of the misconceptions out there is that global warming and climate change began with the Industrial Revolution. This false theory is used to support the argument that human beings are entirely responsible for the ice melting and the sea levels rising. However, what you should know is that most of the water in the glaciers had already melted before the internal combustion engine was invented and before the modern fossil fuels industry was created. Therefore, Human beings did not start global warming. However, human activity is making a bad situation worse and we are accelerating the effects of the warming period. In 1979, the first World Climate Conference was held where it was determined that global warming is a threat, climate change is real, too much carbon dioxide was being emitted, and the destruction of the forests was one of the primary reasons that the earth has too much carbon dioxide in the air. That was 42 years ago. It has been common knowledge for 42 years that the lack of trees causes too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Think of all those trees that could have been planted from 1979 until today. If only the environmentalists had spoken in a clear, loud, and unequivocal voice and said, start planting billions of trees right now. But too many environmentalists have been silent about the benefits of planting trees. Instead of planting trees, instead of solving the problem, too many environmentalists make up excuses to avoid tree planting, and they whip up as much frenzy as possible about fossil fuels. In order to make fossil fuels the scapegoat, the scientists who are in charge of the message had to downplay trees. This makes the climate scientists do a little dance where they loudly and vehemently blame fossil fuels. Then they quietly admit that forests are important, but they declare that the burning of wood is carbon neutral, and in the end they look the other way and do nothing when it comes time to replant the billions upon billions of trees that humanity has killed. It is just annoying that climate scientists have been so busy differentiating the slow carbon cycle from the fast carbon cycle, and they differentiate their energy sector carbon arguments from their land use sector carbon arguments, and they regurgitate their extreme hatred for fossil fuels. But they have failed to come together as a group and sound the alarm and proclaim that we need to plant billions of trees right now. The truth is that fossil fuels emissions are not the only reason that there is too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. There are almost 8 billion human beings on Earth who are breathing, belching, pooping, and farting out carbon. There are over a billion livestock who are also breathing, belching, pooping, and farting out carbon. We emit billions upon billions of tons of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases when we make steel, when we make cement, and when we make fertilizer. We kill billions upon billions of shellfish, thereby preventing their shells from absorbing carbon. Humanity has cut down billions upon billions of trees, thereby preventing those trees from absorbing and sequestering carbon. We have started too many forest fires where billions upon billions of trees have been killed. Yet, despite all the various ways that humanity emits too much carbon dioxide, the environmentalists keep trying to blame fossil fuels. They pretend that fossil fuels are the enemy that caused global warming, despite the provable fact that global warming began thousands of years before human recorded history. Now, for the record, I am not here to defend fossil fuels. I do not work for the fossil fuels industry. I believe that fossil fuels are downright disgusting. And I have been granted patents in the areas of electric vehicles, wind power, and solar power. I did not make any money on my patents. 
but at least I tried to create alternative energy platforms that would replace fossil fuels. Yet, despite my own small efforts to help eliminate fossil fuels, I believe that we need to step back, gain some perspective, and just admit that fossil fuels are only part of the problem. And yes, the burning of fossil fuels should be classified as bad and wrong and evil. But in the big picture, it is a lesser evil than cutting down all the forests and burning all the wood, which most certainly would have already happened without fossil fuels. Instead of the frenzied invective against fossil fuels, we need to plant billions of trees. Every time you want to blame fossil fuels for global warming, go plant a tree. Sadly, there are environmentalists out there who have created a web of arguments against the planting of trees. Let us talk about some of those excuses. The first excuse for not planting trees that you might hear is tied into the hatred against fossil fuels. Some environmentalists argue that planting trees will allow the fossil fuels industry to get away with it. And that is an example of how our modern society perverts the solution into a problem. Even though a few billion trees planted each year could remove all of the carbon dioxide that the burning of fossil fuels currently emits, some environmentalists are so committed to their crusade that they would rather leave the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere rather than plant trees. The second excuse you might hear from some of the environmentalists who do not want to plant trees would be that trees are not enough. That is really what they say. Trees are not enough. This is a ridiculous argument because nothing is enough in and of itself. Solar panels, green building codes, increased fuel mileage of automobiles, and electric vehicles are not enough. Environmentalists have endorsed many programs that are not enough. Yet, when it comes to planting trees, they say, ah, do not bother, it is not enough. Maybe the reason that certain environmentalists say that tree planting is not enough is because they have never taken the time to calculate how much carbon dioxide can be neutralized by a growing tree. So, let us look at an example. What if you planted a tree seedling and 30 or 40 years later your tree had grown into a column of wood that was 3 feet in diameter, 55 feet tall with a dry weight of 25 pounds per cubic foot? How much carbon dioxide did that tree neutralize? In order to figure this out, you need to know that the dry weight of wood is 45% carbon and you need to know that carbon dioxide is only 27% carbon. The answer is 8 tons. Let me repeat, one tree, 3 feet in diameter, a column of wood 55 feet tall and it neutralized 8 tons of carbon dioxide. If you had planted 100 trees per acre at 8 tons of carbon dioxide per tree, then you would have sequestered 800 tons of carbon dioxide in each acre. If you had planted 1,000 acres, you would have sequestered 800,000 tons of carbon dioxide. If you had planted a million acres, you would have sequestered 800 million tons of carbon dioxide. The United States reports that we emit about 6 billion tons of carbon dioxide per year. So, assuming 8 tons per tree and 100 trees per acre, we need 7.5 million acres of trees planted each year to neutralize our carbon dioxide emissions. The next excuse you might hear from environmentalists who would rather blame fossil fuels than plant trees would be that there's not enough land to plant trees. Where are you going to find the land to plant 7.5 million acres in order to sequester 6 billion tons of carbon dioxide? If you went back over the last couple of decades and if you added up all the acres that suffered a human-caused forest fire, you would easily find a lot more than 7.5 million acres of land where trees need to be planted. The environmentalists will then say that when you plant trees in the wrong place, it will do more harm than good. Using that excuse is inane and doltish because it applies to everything. Whenever you do something wrong, it might not work. So all we have to do is plant the trees in the right place. How about instead of being naysayers, some of you environmentalists could help with the process of finding places where it would be appropriate to plant trees. We can start by focusing on federal land in the states of Arizona, Utah, Nevada, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, Colorado, and New Mexico, where you will find 261 million acres of federal land. So, out of those 261 million acres, do you think maybe the environmentalists could identify 7.5 million acres that would be right places to plant trees and sequester 6 billion tons of carbon dioxide? Maybe out of those 261 million acres, you could identify 75 million acres of land where it would be appropriate to sequester 60 billion tons of carbon dioxide. I once heard a scientist say that we should not plant trees because trees emit volatile organic compounds. 
And I shook my head, and I looked at the scientist, and I thought silently to myself, do you not fart? Human beings emit volatile organic compounds on a daily basis by breathing, belching, sweating, and farting. Who are we to throw stones at the trees? It just seems like some scientists will search for any reason not to do the thing that they know must get done. In this case, we must plant trees right now. Please grab a shovel. Next, you hear all these astronomical predictions that we need a trillion trees in order to combat carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And I admit that a trillion more trees in the world would be nice, but we really do not need that many trees. If you could plant three billion trees like the historic American chestnut or like the southern live oak, then over time you can neutralize 150 billion tons of carbon dioxide, which would be 25 years of our currently reported U.S. carbon dioxide emissions. Or if you planted three billion ponderosa pine trees and let them grow tall, you could sequester 59 billion tons of carbon dioxide. What about the beautiful and fast-growing Paulonia tomentosa princess tree? If you planted 3 billion, you would neutralize about 15 billion tons of carbon dioxide rather quickly in about 15 years. And then the environmentalists who do not want to give up their rage against fossil fuels will argue and say, but what types of trees should we plant at each location? And my answer would be, I do not care. Hire an arborist and hire a landscape architect and figure out which are the largest and most diverse trees that will survive at each location. And then those environmentalists will argue and say, but what if all those trees interfere with the naturally existing environment? And my answer would be, you sure do not worry about the naturally existing environments when it comes to putting solar panels in the pristine desert or when it comes to building massive windmills or when it comes to the mining operations needed to build all those electric vehicle batteries and all those solar cells. Indeed, at the present rate of global warming, pretty soon there are not going to be any naturally existing environments. Global warming will become a human extinction event, and it will cause many other plants and animals to go extinct, unless we slow it down enough to give us time to prepare. So please treat this like an emergency and grab a shovel and plant a big tree right now. And then those environmentalists will say that we cannot plant trees because we need as much farmland as possible to feed humanity. And my answer would be that there is plenty of land to plant a few billion massive trees. Plus, where are all those complaints about the loss of farmland when it comes time to plant the crops to produce biodiesel and ethanol? Also, the available farmland could be converted to tree crops. We need to eat more tree crops, like apple pie, cherry pie, peach cobbler, chocolate-covered bananas. You scientists need to leave your hatred of fossil fuels behind, and you need to lead the charge and get out there and plant more trees. We need to grow enough new trees to neutralize all of that carbon dioxide that has been released into the atmosphere by the production of steel and cement and fertilizer and lumber. And as long as I'm preaching, if we were to put out all the forest fires immediately, while they are still small, we would prevent billions of tons of carbon dioxide from entering the atmosphere. We would have an entire air force of firefighting drones to combat forest fires if the environmentalists really cared about controlling carbon dioxide. Also, the western United States could grow a lot more trees if the state of California would stop being so selfish and stop stealing the Colorado River water. California has plenty of water just to the west in the Pacific Ocean. If California were not so selfish, they would purify the ocean water and allow the other western states to divide up the Colorado River. And of course, California will answer and say that it is too expensive to do the right thing and purify the ocean water, which is exactly what a selfish state like California would say. California allows millions of acre feet of rainwater to flow into the ocean. Then California just takes the Colorado River water that other states need and will put to better use. Then California pretends to care about global warming by passing strict vehicle emission standards that are almost meaningless to the atmosphere and highly expensive for the consumers. Yet, all the while, California uses an obscene amount of steel, cement, fertilizer, and lumber, and they have massive numbers of livestock, and they just pretend that such things do not matter because California really does not care about carbon dioxide. If California did care, if the 49 other states did care, if the USA did care, then the billions upon billions of trees that we need would have already been planted. Lastly, 
I wanted to say to all those wealthy mega corporations who are making all those insincere pledges to become carbon neutral in 10 or 20 or 30 years from now, you should stop making false future promises. There are already numerous nonprofit organizations that are already in the business of planting trees and they know what they are doing. All they need is for you wealthy corporations to write them checks right now today and more trees will be planted tomorrow. Thank you.